protective gear. <laughs> I'm Katrina Hill, the action flick chick. I am the author of Action Movie Freak, and I'm a journalist for various websites. So I'm going to let everybody introduce themselves and tell kind of what you do and what or what you're best known for. Okay, I guess I'll start. All right, I'm Jenna Bush. I co-host a show with Stan Lee called Cocktails with Stan. I'm the entertainment editor for Fanhattan. I own lots of swords. <laughs> and she used to be on Broadway, so she doesn't need a microphone. Um, my name is America Young. Um, I also work with Stanley on his channel, a show called Geek Therapy, which he licenses, and also a weekly um, comic book show. Um, and I also do stunt work. That's actually how I do my bills of stunt work and voiceover, but I'm uh, also a content creator. I'm Dr. Andrea Lenamendi, with a PhD in clinical psychology and practice at UCLA. Um, I talk about the psychology of heroes and villains and cosplayers. And uh, earlier this year, I appeared in Batgirl 16 as Barbara Gordon's psychologist. <laughs> I've written for dangerous women like Buffy and Starbucks. And I write politically dangerous stuff like husbands. I'm Dana Brazil Salovey. I write comic books. I'm known for my uh, creator owned series, The Adventures of a Comic Con Girl, about girls who go to conventions and cause trouble. <laughs> I'm uh, the best female free runner in the world. Um, if you don't know what free running is, it's where we jump building the building, flip off balls, that kind of stuff. I um, get to travel with Red Bull all over the world, so that's really fun. Um, I also do stunts and been on Ninja Warrior a bunch of times. Jessica Marizona had an emergency and couldn't come. And Emma Caulfield is stuck in traffic. And but she sent me a message to read to you guys, word for word. So kids, if their kids might want to be aware. <laughs> I'm a total asshole. I've lived in Los Angeles for most of my adult life and should know better than to think two hours is enough of a buffer to get somewhere. <laughs> Especially on a Friday. I'm currently going 33 miles an hour and I want to cry. <laughs> I don't like letting people down. I adore all the women on this panel and hope to work with them in some fashion again soon. <coughs> Fuck me. <laughs> Did I mention that I'm a fucking idiot? Please forgive me, my wonderful fans and non-fans who are there to see Jane Espenson and not me. <laughs> each other on and I go far much farther than I would have just writing on my own. So do not combine. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I'm probably most dangerous when I feel like, well, if you've read my comic, you know that I'm, I'm pretty much always dangerous, but I get, I get super dangerous when I feel like someone I love or someone I care about is threatened. And a lot of the time that is not physically, but it's like when they're challenged whether or not you know, they're welcome somewhere or their position in society. And uh, that, that makes me the most dangerous. I'm with Emma on this one. I'm the most dangerous when I'm in my car in LA traffic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm most dangerous when somebody tries to steal my food. <laughs> but when are you guys the most geekiest? All the time. <laughs> when I pull, pull out my phone. Yeah. No, I mean, I think if you're, if you're somebody who's as geeky as we all are, you just are that all the time. I don't think there's ever, well, all right, maybe when I have Star Wars on, other than that. <laughs> I, when I'm talking with my friends and we're debating a very minute but very important point about one of our favorite uh, properties, um, whether it be Doctor Who or Star Wars, and um, but that's, that's when I feel like we're in a case because no one's watching, it's just us. We're so into this argument that we must win because we're right. <laughs> um, that's when I feel the freest and the most geekiest. I actually feel my most geekiest when I'm at conventions like WonderCon and with these amazing ladies because um, my day-to-day -day routine actually doesn't involve a lot of geeky stuff and I work in a place where um, people actually ask me, wait, so which one's Darth Vader and which one's the Stormtrooper? <laughs> <laughs> And the most recent question I got was, what is DC? What is Marvel? So when I'm here, I am the most geekiest. I'm myself. I get to geek out and feel fulfilled and, and be a part of this culture. So it is here now. Um, I find it like, you can't define geeky as like, liking sci-fi stuff when you work in sci-fi and you're supposed to talk about sci-fi with all your fellow writers on the day. So I think when I'm geeky is when I'm trying to sideline that conversation into talking about Project Runway. And going, oh, believe what Amanda said last week? I'm not sure. Like that's 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 geeky for me, and I can I can get into it with some Project Runway with you guys if you want. I think for me, I'm not I'm not as geeky in conversation, like. Things, sci-fi, comic books are such an integral part of my life that when I'm having a conversation, it's just a typical conversation. But when I'm, like, when I'm watching Doctor Who, I, uh, I'm like actually there. Like, if you, if you mess with me, I'm like, I'm actually there. Like, I, I met William Shakespeare and I met Vincent Van Gogh. I was there, I know, and I was on, you know, I was, I was a companion there. So when I'm watching it and I can just throw myself in there and I don't have to, I don't have to engage with other people, I can just let my mind go. That's, that's when I'm geeky is. I think geeky is like the new cool, right? Like okay. geeks are like the successful people in the world, right? So I grew up playing sports and stuff like that, so I was always around the jocks, wasn't as much around the geeks as much, but I feel like all my friends these days are geeks, you know, they're like more successful, which is really empowering to, to see that and, you know, for them to be accepted and find themselves in their own environment and doing things that they're passionate about and, and learning about, I don't know. When was the first time you had went to a Comic Con, and why did you go? Um, well, I was actually covering things, so I was interviewing a lot of people from TV and film. Um, and my first con, which I think was six years ago, I wanted to go to Comic Con for years, but I lived in New York, and then my parents wouldn't take me, and I'm not over that. I still, <laughs> I still torture them about it. But um, it was like I couldn't believe there were this many of my people in that place. It was amazing. Yeah, it actually wasn't that long ago for me either. Um, maybe about six years ago. Um, but it was it was interesting because I always heard people talking about it, but in my circle of friends, it was only ever the guys talking about it, and so I never really felt like it was some place that I should go, you know. Um, and so finally, I I went with my friend. We caught on it. We were just we just decided we were gonna go, and we were really nervous about it, but we were like, fuck it. Well, she's already broken the ice. <laughs> That was in those words. <laughs> I was already broken the accent, Emma. Um, and so we caught on the train and we walked in and we were just so overwhelmed and so happy because even though we didn't feel like we were supposed to be there, we thought we were getting away with something. Once we walked in, we realized, oh, oh, this is cool. This is okay. And we should be here. And so um, that was a really cool experience. So about 
six years ago, <laughs> it's like a magic number, um, I was wondering where I could wear my Darth Vader costume in public. <laughs> I needed to wear it, so um, I was actually living in San Diego and I thought, what a better place to cosplay than at Comic-Con. So I actually started with cosplay. I think it must have been when Buffy was still on, but it may have been maybe during the Firefly era um, that Joss had been going down, like, let's you know, take a whole bunch of writers down and we'll all go down. And I had ducked out of it for a couple of years for the, sort of the same reason, like it sounded just sort of it sounded chaotic and boyish, and I don't know. It just didn't sound like something I'd love. And then I finally was like, "All right, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go see what this is about." And loved it. And I've been back, I think, every year since. And um, it's fun from this side of the dais, and it's fun from over there. It's just <laughs> like it's you get to be both a creator and a fan at the same time, and that's that's when sci-fi works best. So my first comic book convention was Wizard World in 2008, and I went because my roommate wanted to go. He knew I liked comics, he knew I liked Marvel, so he's like, let's go, and I just, I went, and I had such a good time. Um, I counted down the days until the next year. But he, uh, he didn't have a job anymore, so he couldn't pay for a ticket, and he volunteered, and I ended up assisting the media guest coordinator at that convention, and ever since that show, I've been doing uh, 15 to 30 shows a year, just like every, every job I could think of doing, every, anyone who I could get to bring me to convention, I would work for them, and it's just been, it's been the best, it's become my life, I love it. This is a short answer, this is my first time here. <laughs>
the reality changes long before the joke does. So people were still making jokes about airline food after airline stopped serving food. <laughs> and so what we're in that stage now is where the reality has changed, but the joke still lingers. And it's just, we just wait it out. People will start seeing who's really here, and, and that it's this awesome entire range of the spectrum, everyone you can imagine. And that will, that will change, I hope. I, I also think, just to jump in real quick, I also think that um, I'm not on a, a very high scale in terms of public uh, persona, but I think the higher you get up in that scale, the more they're just going to find any reason to make fun of you, whatever it is. And if what they're able to go after you for is that you happen to like things that qualify as geek, whatever they consider, then they'll go after that. I don't think it's necessarily because they don't believe that geek girls exist. I think they're just trying to find a way to be negative. And I think the more public you get, the more negativity you're going to get, whether it's based in any kind of truth or not, is moot. You know, but hopefully that will go away, and they won't be making fun of you for being a geek girl, they'll make fun of you for being a redhead. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> they'll find something always. So, one of my least favorite things to do is argue about semantics, but, um, but I was thinking about this, and like, as far as sexism goes, um, like, I've spent half the time here looking at one of my guy friends who like really super supports me as a writer. And I thought about this and like I have, I have friends, male and female, who show their support for me no matter what, regardless of the fact that I'm a woman and that makes no difference to them. The one thing that I have experienced is objectification. And I think that that's something that is, is, is present, that's been there for a long time in, in, in the mere fact of being a woman and having body parts, that it happens to men too. I've had, I was actually at a convention um, a couple of years ago, and I was wearing a t-shirt and jeans, and a, a man grabbed my breast. Uh, and I've had men take pictures of me, and when I try and speak to them, they hold up their hand. So I've had that like objectification without knowing me. I've had people treat me in a manner that I don't enjoy. But as far as sexism goes, as far as like people uh, treating me like I'm any less, you know, uh, that like I have less potential as a writer, or as a professional because of, of being a woman, I feel like maybe even the opposite in LA. I feel like I got a lot of support and encouragement and I, you know, I couldn't be more grateful for that. Um, I'm gonna resort mine back to free running because that's what I know. Um, you know, I put a lot of videos out on YouTube and everything and, and quite often the comment is like, oh, get back to the kitchen, like quit flipping off walls, get back to the kitchen. And I just kind of laugh, it's like, really? Like, you are so bored that you're like, well, that's good because you're watching my video, one, two, you're taking the time to comment on it, so thank you. <laughs> um, but within, within our sport, like, the, I'm like one of the only girls that really do it. And so it's really cool to have a community, like a family, like the guys really take care of me. Like, it's awesome to find a girl that shares the same passion. But at the same time, like the guys have been like nothing but supportive, and it, you know, it helps to, to you know, to have that support. That yeah. Anyways. Yeah. You know, even uh, I am in the mostly in the action movie genre, which has typically been seen as a male genre, even though that's not even true anymore. And it's just a little bit of. Um, I was at a convention selling my book, and I get a lot of people in general, men and women, just go, "You wrote this book?" Like. I did not have someone else write it for me. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, I think we just keep pushing on. And you know, and it's not even, like I said, it's not just men. It's females attacking females, you know, people attacking people. So how do you deal with any advice on dealing with um, hate or, you know, sexism stalkers? <laughs> They're on Twitter. Um, but actually, I, because I, because I write and I get a lot of comments, um, they're not always nice. And but for the most part, um, just don't engage. Just don't engage with them. If there's, if there's no reason to. Um, but I also think having a really strong female community around you, like these ladies are amazing, and you know some of the women that I worked with on um, woman, the Womanthology anthology recently, just they show up when things are going badly or somebody says something, they all jump to your defense. And I think it is really important to make sure that you're aware of your community and that you guys support each other. Um, also, I have noticed that there, this is just silly, but um, every year I go to Comic-Con, the line is longer in the ladies' room, so it's nice to know. <laughs> um, my, my method is to not engage. Um, some people are super brave and they engage, like Adrian Curry is amazing at just telling people that 
get lost. And then she gets, she treats them in a way that they're like, oh, oh, sorry, sorry. And then that's not my style. I think that that wouldn't work for me. But I usually just don't engage. Um, and I also just, but there's, there's this quote that I heard once, I think it was Woody Allen who said it, because they were asking why he never goes to award shows, and he said, um, if you listen to them when they say you're good, you have to listen to them when they say you're bad. <laughs> and so as bad as the baddest comments are, like you have to take them with as much of a grain of salt as you would take the greatest comments as well. Um, and just kind of know yourself and know your own path and listen to the people who you respect and their feedback. Um, definitely always listen to fans and listen to what they're saying, but you always have to be able to filter it through. And if someone's giving you a negative comment, you need to be able to look at it and be like, okay, are they right? I mean, should, is that, should I have done this better? Yeah, they pro that was a good comment, even though he used words in there that maybe I shouldn't be reading, no matter how old I am. Um, and, but then there's some good comments you'll read, where you'll be like, well, that was a really nice comment, but um, it actually wasn't based on anything that's helpful. So I think the main thing is to be able to separate yourself from it and not take it personally and um, find, just use them and make it useful. I think this is where I might be sort of under the radar dangerous because I just, you know, I, I think that I try to maintain resilience and just try to, you know, not engage and, and ignore it. But I also feel like a lot of times because I have been questioned or quizzed or um, people may, may not think I am who I am, who I say I am, which is weird, um, sometimes I expect that. So I sort of walk around with this expectation, you know, that person's going to quiz me or that guy doesn't believe me or I have to prove myself. And I think that I have to let go of those expectations and, um, and sometimes give people, men and women, the benefit of the doubt that they may actually genuinely be interested in my costume or my cosplay and not, you know, staring at my anatomy. And if they are staring at my anatomy, well, it's there. So, that's that. Uh, we had been really impressed and surprised that um, the comments on husbands online had been 99% positive. Like, there were, like, almost no negative comments. Then, uh, a YouTuber who had a very, um, who's fantastic, uh, but had a very sort of young male straight audience recommended us and so suddenly we had all these people coming to check us out and, and we got this huge pile of negative comments like all in one night of just sort of like die fags die sort of stuff and it was terrible and we were sort of staring at it and going like what do we do about this do we just totally ignore it and we realized like no let's let's like exploit it Let's use this to make more people get curious and go like, ooh, there's a train wreck and I don't afford it. I'm going to go to that. <laughs> so like, we went on Twitter and we sort of made fun of them and we're like, oh my god, look what's happening over at Husband's. There's all these negative comments. These, aren't they ridiculous? Aren't they hilarious? Don't you feel sorry for these stupid people? <laughs> the people went to go look at the, look at the trolls. And there were people coming and so we were able to like drive our subscriptions went up this huge amount. Um, partly because of that original directing, partly because we, we, we stood on the trolls to reach higher heights. <laughs> I think I think I'm gonna have to agree with Jenna on this. Um, my response to haters is typically just to let it go. I actually had an experience uh, a little while ago. There was an article which some of you might have read. Um, this is why they hate us. And it was about geek girl pinups and um, and about you know why, why these girls did these pinups. Well, I was one of the girls who did the pinups, and um, you know it was like one of those things where I actually I actually the first time he did it I asked him to do it because I thought it was so cool, and uh, it was you know just for fun and. There was like a lot of controversy around this article, and I, you know, I had some people ask me like, "Are you gonna respond?" and you know, whatever. And I'm like, "No." Well, first of all, I've got you know my first comic book is coming out in like a week. The last thing I want to do is go online and say like, "These are all these negative things I have to say about <laughs> another person." Also, read my comic book. I hope you like it. Uh, so I just like you know I chilled and I just let it be. And actually, I was at a party. Uh, a little while later, and I talked to this really sweet girl in the bathroom, and we ended up exchanging full names, and it was the girl who had read the article, and she was really sweet, and and I, I brought it up, and we didn't talk long about it, but she had, um, she was really hurt, like she thought that she was bringing up an interesting conversation, and she got a lot of backlash, and a lot of people wrote a lot of really mean things to her, and it made her really uncomfortable, and I thought like, 
I don't want people to write bad things about me and I don't want to feel uncomfortable because of things other people say. So if I do that, if I, if I fight that by doing that, then that 